At TDH, we love the Mercedes-Benz GLA. It's a fun, compact, luxurious SUV. Today, we're testing out its electric brother. This over here is the Mercedes-Benz EQA. It is the most affordable Mercedes EV SUV that you can buy in India. And today, we want to see how it fares up against its competition. The Mercedes EQA is Mercedes's most affordable and smallest EV crossover that you can buy. And as you can see, there are a lot of visual changes compared to the GLA as well. And that is all in the name of making it as slippery through the air as possible in order to increase its electric range. Now, at the front, as you can see, the headlights are completely different as well as you don't get a conventional grille that you get in the GLA. Instead, you have it blocked off with black plastic and you have the Mercedes logo in small, 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 small bits all across the front grille. These vents over here are also now blocked off in order to smoothen out the airflow. And once you come to the side, you can see that the wheels also have aero discs and AMG embossing on the side in order to make it as efficient to the air as possible. From the side profile, the EQA looks pretty similar to the GLA. As you can see, it gets the body cladding on the side as well as the roof rails and this is the first iteration of the EQA that has come to India. For international viewers, this is the facelift, but this EQA that you get in India, the 250 plus, is the very first one that has come over here. If you come to the back, you can see that it gets this wraparound taillight with the DRL running the whole length of the rear. And you see the same design element in the front with the front LED DRLs. And that is a Mercedes EQ design element. And it is shared amongst all Mercedes EQ models. And especially in this lovely blue color paint, I really like the design of the EQA. You can let us know your thoughts down below. Hop into the EQA and the interior is very similar to the one of the GLA. But once you start paying closer attention, you will find the small, 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 small differences. For example, the AC vents are now finished in rose gold. The seats are now made out of recycled plastic bottles instead of your normal leather. And the door trim and the dash trim is now completely different. Instead of getting carbon fiber or the silver or black trim that you usually get, you have the Mercedes logo in small pieces and the one on the dash actually lights up with the ambient lighting as well, which looks really, really fancy. Overall, the interior is very similar to the one of the GLA. It has its little fancy touches here and there. I really love these rose gold accents that you get. The steering wheel is your usual flat bottom steering wheel that you get from Mercedes with all of your controls on the steering as well. Left hand side controls the infotainment, right hand side controls your instrument cluster, your gear selector is over here on the right and your other controls are over here on the left. You also get a pretty big panoramic sunroof at the back and overall it's a very nice interior. I wouldn't mind it. So let's hop into the back seat and see what's going on at the back. Hop into the rear seat of the EQA and that's where you can see some of the shortcomings of it. Since the EQA and the GLA share the same underpinnings, this architecture and chassis has been made for an ICE car. So when you put that sort of an architecture and chassis and use it for an EV, that's where you can see some of the shortcomings. For example, the EQA has its batteries lodged into the floor. That increases the height of the floor, which means I basically have no under thigh support, which can be very annoying on longer journeys. But since the infrastructure of India is not there yet, your NUA is not going to be taking your EQA on an extensively long journey. Even though the EQA's range is an impressive 560 kilometers. But it's not all bad at the rear of the EQA's cabin. For example, you have a panoramic sunroof which extends to the back, which lets in a lot of good sunlight. You also have a rear armrest. You get type C charging ports at the rear. You get this net over here in which you can keep your phone, laptop, whatever you want. And of course, you get a really nice Burmester sound system all across the car, which sounds really, really nice. Open up the boot of the EQA and it suffers, unfortunately, from the same problem. Since the batteries are lodged underneath the car, that means the boot space has been reduced from 425 liters in the GLA to 340 liters. And as you can still see, it's a pretty decent amount of space. I mean, we've been able to keep a lot of our equipment as well as the charging cables and everything for the car. But it still is a little bit of a drawback, but that's not what I'm gonna complain about. Let's see how it is to drive.
The Mercedes EQA gets a 70.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery which is placed inside the floor of the car which is good enough to make 188 horsepower and 385 newton meters of torque. Of course the best part of electric vehicles is that the torque is absolutely instant. But on the contrary side of things the EQA is not insanely fast i mean if you put your foot flat to the floor yes you get that initial jolt of acceleration but it's good enough only for 8.6 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour from a standstill which is pretty all right so it's not mind numbingly fast but the real thing that the EQA is good at is actually the range that it gives 560 kilometers on a single charge now of course probably that range is done in optimum conditions but the EQA is the first EV that i have to say is pretty practical when it comes to day to day use we got the car at 93% charge and the charge now is at 40% and it still shows a minimum range of 177 kilometers and a maximum range if you drive it in the best conditions with the most light foot possible of 240 kilometers which is pretty damn impressive Moreover I think so we've driven the car more than 200 kilometers since we've got it so I think so the range that they're claiming is pretty realistic Now the EQA gets a couple of different recuperation modes for its regenerative braking so you have normal recuperation strong recuperation and maximum recuperation and if you don't want to go through the hassle of picking one hold down one of the paddles and it goes into intelligent recuperation and that is the cool thing about the paddles the paddle shifters in this car are actually used to adjust the recuperation or regenerative braking of the EQA you also get a couple of different driving modes you get comfort eco sport and individual put it into sport mode and put your foot flat to the floor and like i said it gets a insane amount of torque at the start but it slowly starts to taper off once you get into the triple digit speeds talking about the top speed of the car according to online websites and mercedes themselves if i'm not wrong it can do 160 kilometers an hour which is pretty all right but again like i said this thing is more impressive when it comes to the range and how you can actually extract the maximum amount of range you have this menu inside the car which can tell you how to maximize the range by adjusting the climate control interior function and a whole bunch of other stuff the suspension of the EQA also seems to be a little bit more compliant and plush compared to the GLA now the GLA 220d 4matic that we had gotten was the AMG line variant and if i'm not wrong the struts or the suspension of that car is not different to the normal GLA that you get but still the EQA seems to be a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more waftier in that sense and that's a very good thing because as a daily driver this is very comfortable some annoying things that i really have to point out about the EQA are the steering control buttons which are touch capacitive so if you just brush your hand over it by mistake so you'll just go into a different menu which is pretty annoying the EQA gets a whole bunch of sensors and what not for you know making sure that you don't have any sort of collisions during traffic the blind spot monitoring is a big thumbs up but the collision warning system and the active brake assist is pretty dangerous especially for india and the most annoying thing about it is that you can of course turn it off but you have to turn it off each and every time that you get into the car and of course the eq keeps on sensing everything that is going on on the road so especially if you're someone sitting at the back the flip camera keeps on opening and closing and the noise that the motor of the flip camera makes is pretty damn loud so that is another very annoying thing that is there about the EQA and there is a way to shut it off but the motor noise itself is so loud and that is something that Mercedes can probably improve upon Another thing that I wish Mercedes would have retained is the center trackpad or scroller wheel. You just have this rubber pad now in the middle to keep your phone or wallet, I guess, which is all right, but if you are driving, you would probably want a trackpad or a scroller wheel. 
although mercedes has given the infotainment uh, buttons over here on the steering i would much prefer a scroller wheel or a trackpad in the middle but that is not to say that there are some really good things about the EQA. For example, they have kept proper buttons or switches for the AC control so you don't have to take your eyes off of the road and control your climate control and stuff. Other good things about the interior is the interior itself. I mean, I love the design of it and it really comes to life at night with the amazing ambient lighting that Mercedes is known for. And the extra thing that the EQA gets is the illuminated dash as well with the small little tri-star illuminated in the dash. So that looks really cool and really premium. Talking about the charging situation of the EQA 250 Plus, using the home charger that you get with the car, the EQA can go from 0 to 100% charge in roughly 10 hours using a 7 kilowatt charging point. Using a CCS connector, the EQA can charge up to 120 kilowatts and can go from 20 to 80% charge in about 37 minutes. Other things we really liked about the EQA is the highly customizable instrument cluster up front which shows you a variety of things like your region breaking inputs, trip data and has a whole bunch of varying themes. Since the EQA is based on the GLA and not the A-Class, the ground clearance is also a pretty good 214mm. The EQA competes against the likes of the BMW iX1 and Volvo XC40 Recharge. While both cars make more power than the EQA, the EQA has 100 km more claimed range than both vehicles which seems to be a much more important metric to consider if you are buying an electric vehicle. Overall, the EQA is a really cool car and one of the first EVs that we have actually gelled with on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, the price tag of Rs 66 lakhs seems to be quite steep but is at par with other luxurious EVs that it competes with. So, comment your thoughts down below on the Mercedes-Benz EQA and would you take it over the XC40 Recharge or BMW iX1? Let us know down below and we will catch you in the next one.